Good day and welcome. I just finished my Studio 6 project, which you might be aware of, and I'm pretty stoked with it. It ended up pretty well. It turned out pretty well. I've had a lot of people asking me about the render that I did for it, the hero shot perspective. A lot of people have been asking me how I did it and kind of what programs I used. That's probably what I got asked most. What software did I use? I used Rhino and V-Ray, V-Ray for Rhino, and then I did some post editing in Photoshop. And so I actually wanna walk through that entire process with you in this video. I'm not claiming that this render is perfect or my work was perfect. However, I've got a feeling that you'll be able to take away some really useful tips and tricks to use in your own projects from this video. So stay tuned and let's get straight into it. So the whole rendering process begins in your modeling program, whether that be Rhino, Revit, SketchUp, what else do they use nowadays? Archicad, AutoCAD, what it, not, maybe not AutoCAD, you can't really do renders from AutoCAD, but any of those other programs, that's where this process begins. And it's so important to know that the more detailed your model is, the better your renders are going to look and the faster and the easier the process of post editing them is going to be. And the way that I started this project, and this might change down the line once I get into a bit more of rendering and post rendering, but the way I did it this time was that I started with a massing model of just mass, just blocks. I had a general idea of what my concept was and how it was massed and so I wanted to create that in a 3D form. This was after producing several sketches and when I say several I mean like hundreds of sketches and diagrams and plans and sections and so from that massing model I figured out where I wanted the view of my render to be. That's the first thing to do, just figure out where you want the views to be. Especially for a studio project like this, you don't need it to be completely resolved, as in the design of it doesn't need to be completely resolved. For me, I was putting this onto a layout poster, so I had to print off a poster which was 840 millimeters by 2,600 millimeters, so it was like floor to ceiling height. And so then everything on that poster was all of my work. And so I wasn't actually showing my tutorer or my professor, whatever you call it, I wasn't showing them my actual virtual model. All they were seeing was the renders that come from it. And so this is important to know because that means you don't have to completely resolve everything in your model, as I said. Once you figure out where your views are, then that's the only thing you have to resolve. You don't have to resolve all the stuff behind it or the context behind it. If it's not seen in those views, you don't need to design it. While it's still good to think about those things and to have you know, a reason behind or an idea behind them, it's not necessary to showcase them unless you know your professor asks you to showcase them. There's no point modeling up everything to the smallest detail if half of that stuff isn't getting shown on your render or in your poster. So that's the first thing, figure out where your cameras are placed and where all your views are, and then start building up your model considering where those views are. And if we take a step backwards, this would involve figuring out the dimensions of these views. We have to figure out how these views, these renders are going to sit on our poster. Unless it's just a single render that's going to be used online, you need to consider how it's going to be formatted on your poster, how it's going to be laid out. And so this would involve playing around with how it's going to sit on your page, you know, doing a draft layout of your poster before figuring out your renders. A lot of students, they'll kind of just you know, produce all their work, produce all their renders and sections and plans, and then figure out that half of it won't fit on the page and they, it won't sit on the page nicely because it's in the wrong dimensions, the wrong aspect ratio. And so it's good to figure out those things before chucking them on your page. That's taking a step backwards. This is like step zero to figure out a draft layout of your poster or how these things are going to be uh, arranged on a page. And the most important thing here is to figure out the aspect ratio of your render because that's how it's going to be sitting on your page. It doesn't matter the dimensions of it. It could be really low resolution, really low quality, but the aspect ratio has to be right because once you've got the aspect ratio right, you can do some test renders in a lower resolution and that won't destroy your computer just trying to do test renders. Once you've figured out where the views are and the aspect ratio of those views and everything we've just gone over, then you can move on to detailing up the model. For me, I didn't get to spend as much time as I wanted to in this particular step. I didn't really add as much detail as I would have liked. For me, this kind of involved adding in doors, windows, and a few overhangs. I really wish I did have more time to add more detail to my model because it would have made it look a lot better. 
due to time constraints, I had to just press forward with the detail I had. And that's fine. It worked out okay. So then once you've added in these details from, you know, you've gone from massing model to, you know, slightly detailed up and you've thought about, you know, how these spaces are going to be used and you've considered where the doors are, where the windows are, where the, how the roof works and how the structure works, all this kind of stuff, you've added in those details then you can move on to adding in materials. And this is a really big step. You might see some students work online or maybe it's one of your friends and they'll have their renders and it's really well detailed renders. However, the materials just aren't really done well. You'll still have you know, your white buildings or little white bits of the model um, that obviously have had no materials applied to it and it's just kind of unintentionally unfinished. Some things like the buildings behind your actual model, um, they can be left intentionally in the default material or perhaps just a simple white material. But then it's like when you actually look deeper into your model and you see that some of the walls are still white, you know, the interior is all white um, in the default material, it looks like it's just unintentionally unfinished and you do not want that look. That's what your professors are looking for. They're looking for a completely resolved design and that includes all the materials and everything else we've talked about before. When you're going through your entire model and you're choosing the materials for everything, this is a great process of resolving your design. This is actually helping you figure out, you know, what materials are going to be used for your design, for your model. This is something that you won't usually be able to figure out just by doing plans and sections because you're actually in a 3D view now and you can figure out every single detail and you can apply a material to every little object in your model. And this is helping you resolve your design and giving you reasoning behind applying these materials. So then once you've detailed up your design, and you've added all the materials you need, the next step was testing out or just testing and experimenting with a lot of different things. This involved testing lighting, how the lights, how the scene is lit, you know, how is the sun playing around on your model, you know, how is it casting shadows onto other objects, what sky you want to use, that's always important and you know this kind of played a big role in my render. The sky makes it look a whole lot better if I can say so myself. And this is just a little detail which doesn't take much time to figure out but it's worth testing it with different skies, giving yourself options and that's something that's worth considering in rendering to give yourself options and to give yourself multiple choices for the, your final render. So just have a play around with the lighting until you figure out something that works for you. Something that you've had planned in your mind, you know, how you want the scene to be lit. Once that's finished, once you've got all the lighting set up and you've got the materials all set up, it's going to be starting to look pretty good. So now what you can do is start adding in those other details which aren't really a part of your design. or well, they should be a part of your design. Things like trees and landscaping and even just some furniture, some loose furniture for say like if you've got a cafe space, add in some tables and chairs and all of that good stuff. I think landscaping and adding in these little details is probably one of the biggest differences that makes a good render and rather than just applying you know a grass texture to the ground try experimenting with v-ray fur this makes it just look so much better using v-ray fur instead of just a material if you don't have v-ray that's fine you can probably do this in something else but to just experiment with i guess just experiment try different things try something that you haven't done before and just try and learn from this whole experience but for me i use v-ray fur and it made it look a whole lot better than just applying a grass material so have a play around with that i had to actually scale my model down to one to five hundred because v-ray fur just destroys your computer when you're trying to render um so i just scale it down and i don't actually recommend doing this because it kind of did play around with the lighting and all the materials. I had to, it pretty much just caused more headaches than it did not doing it. You can actually see in my model how the water didn't render properly. There were little white specks because of the lighting and it was just a big headache. So don't scale your model away from one to one when you're doing renders. And you can go crazy with adding landscaping in with trees, people, furniture, add all these things in because this is adding more detail to your model. And you can add stuff in the foreground as well, not just the background. Adding these trees in the foreground is something I wish I had done in V-Ray rather than doing it in Photoshop later on because you really wanna add as many details as you can before the Photoshop process because when you think about it, if you're adding in 3D people and trees and stuff in Photoshop, they're not gonna have the correct lighting compared to your scene. But if you add them into your file from V-Ray or from your renderer, 
then it's going to have all the correct lighting and shadows and it's going to look a whole lot better. But the reason for me not doing this and rather adding these people and trees in in Photoshop is because it gives you a lot more freedom of choice for the kind of people that you want in your scene. And there are ways to manipulate the lighting and the shadows of people from Photoshop anyway, so it's not a big deal. And it can still look quite good as you can see in my render. Just be careful when you're adding all these trees and people and furniture into your model as well it can really bring up the file size. So that's where it's important to, you know, use proxies and to just try to use low poly objects in your model. We'll kind of touch on this in a later video. I might do a video on reducing your file size in Rhino and I might do one of these for SketchUp and Revit and Archicad as well. So stay tuned and we'll uh, bring that out very shortly. Once you've added in all these details, you're pretty much done. It's just a matter of making sure you've got the right render settings when you're now bringing out the final render. And so you've got to make sure you're using that same aspect ratio you chose earlier in this video and then you know giving it enough dimensions so that it's still high quality 3500 wide is usually going to create a good high quality resolution render make sure you've got the quality set to very high and then additionally you want to add in some render elements and what you can do here is go to your settings you want to click this arrow to the right here and you want to click on render elements then what you can do is start typing in the render elements you want. And I suggest just grabbing all of the ones that I've got here, just type them in, add them to the list, add all of these render elements to the list, and then you can start rendering. Just remember the more render elements you have, the longer your renders are going to take, but it's worth it, trust me. Once we get into the post-production, you'll see why. So now you've got your render all finished and you're ready to bring it into Photoshop. And this is where it gets really fun because you can start getting real creative and you can do whatever you want in Photoshop, sort of. Now I'm going to be continuing on in Photoshop in another video, so stay tuned for that. That will be out shortly. Thank you so much for watching this so far. If you've enjoyed this process, please do leave a like on the video. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel so you don't miss out on future content. And I want to say thank you so much again. I didn't really touch on that very, very enough. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, take care.